Welcome back to another edition of my shorts right here at the Ranch Share Splunkin' at Ball Mall and uh, contemplate the yard pants of doom. You know, there's crazy people all over, folks, and some of them ain't wearing drawers. I am, but, you know, that's beside the point. <coughs> so I finished one of my all-time favorite shitty 90s movies, Falling Down. It's pretty good, and it, if you haven't seen my last video, uh, stop what you're doing and go watch the damn thing. It, it is epic, man. Like... The surplus store scene, the whammy burger scene, right? The bit at the end, right? And that's kind of what expired my rant today, uh, this one anyway. I've had several rants every day for quite some time now. I've just got too much shit to complain about, and I think we all do. And how are we ever going to fix the problem if we don't identify it, right? You know, at the end of the scene in that movie, and I'm not going to spoil it, uh... The, the protagonist and the antagonist are having quite the discussion, right? You know, the guy is talking about, you know, when I was a kid and blah, blah, and look what it is now, you know, this place is a dump. She's telling me about it. You know, the guy is older than the antagonist. So he's telling me about it. I used to fish off this pier, you know, and now you can't eat the fish or swim in the water. It's kind of been a slow progression, hasn't it? When my dad moved to the town we lived in back in 1960. He told me this place was smaller than fucking Mayberry. And it's no joke. This this town I live in like had maybe a few thousand people in it. Now there's a couple hundred thousand here. It's not a small town anymore. Although, you know, it feels like a small town still. It's We're smack dab in the middle of the Mormon belt out here. He said nobody ever locked their door. Man, open any car door, man. And back in them days, most people left their keys in their cars. Believe that shit. You know? Like, if you just walked up to a random person and said, hi, how you doing? You know, they'd sit there and shake your hand and you'd have a lucky strike and a conversation and carry on about your day. You know, you'd bump into your neighbors and your friends at the local hardware store, right? Sounds kind of quaint, don't it? You know, back in the year of the Hayes Code, right? People would, uh, you know, they sit and watch the old westerns, like your Roy Rogers type shit, you know, where the good guy beats the bad guy and stuff like that. And I think somewhere around the 1970s and 1980s, things got a little more complicated in life. And I think the media had something to do with it. I think geopolitical shit had a lot to do with it. And I think just it had always been that way, but people had just never really thought about it until then. Like, I never really thought about it in deeper terms until the early 2000s when I saw it firsthand. You know, people define the good guy as the hero of the story, right? He rides off in the Sundance, like, you know, in the sun, you know, like Butch and Sundance, right? And, you know, he gets the girl, he robs the bank, you know, he does the good shit, right? He beats the bad guy, right? Mm. And, of course, you got your stereotypical bad guy, right? You know, they, they kick puppies and hurt kids and, you know, they, they're drunk and they smoke cigarettes and shit like that. What's actually true is probably a combination of the both. Good men do bad things and bad men do good things sometimes. It's just the way it goes. You know, good or bad are relative terms, right? What I deem a good thing, you know, like a Darwin Award, most people are horrified at. Right? But it doesn't make it any less true or untrue, right? It's a matter of perspective. Like, growing up the way I did, you know, we never really had to worry about problems, at least until I was probably in high school when, like, crime really got bad and stuff, and the gangs had taken it over and, you know, all that shit. And we kind of became more in the know, right? This town used to be like Mayberry even when I was a fucking kid, and then all the old folks died off, and... The gangs moved in, and, you know, shit happens. But, you know, it's hard to imagine going from 1950s, 1960s America, right, to where we're at now, and yet we've got the record all online, right? I mean, you can't really see it on TV anymore and get an accurate story, but you can look online. You can look at the old footage yourself, man, like the way people changed, the way things happened. You know, going from the 1950s Warden June Cleaver era in American history to where nobody had a bathroom on TV because nobody went poop, right? Nobody went poop. They all brushed their teeth, they all had a bath, but they never went poop. Or maybe they pooped in the bathtub. Fuck, I don't know. 
that might be a good fun series, right? Old TV show reviews, you know, or Warden June Cleaver, right? They never shared the same bed. I don't think anybody shared the bed on TV until the Brady Bunch, if I'm mistaken. You know, uh, what's the point in all this, man? We, until the very recently, lived in a sanitized, clean cut, clean shaven, you know, white cake version of America where everything was presented to us as the way it is, and this is the way American life is, right? Or would come home from a hard day at the office, might have played a game of grab ass at June Cleaver while she cooked his dinner in an apron, right? And he might have uh, been a little hard on her beaver over the kitchen stove, you know, before he went and, you know, smacked the kids for being stupid or whatever. Maybe had a few cocktails and a lucky strike, right? Because people used to do those things. And yes, I know that's a recurring theme I hear, but, but this is kind of my point, is that American culture has been under attack for a very long time. So you go from the Ward and the June Cleaver era into the kind of the groovy 60s and 70s, right? With Ward and June Cleaver and, you know, or not Ward and June Cleaver, what the fuck was her name? Uh, oh, hell. Greg and his wife, right? Carol. Yeah, yeah, right. And Alice, you know, the maid, right? You know, her and Sam the Butcher were up to, right? He was always bringing her the maid. A little dirty joke on TV, a little tee-hee nowadays, but, you know, it, it's funny. The point is, the American sitcom was probably the downfall of modern society. It was the first pre-scheduled programming that people had, right? They, they were programmed, this is right, this is wrong, this is the way it went. And you get into the, the fucking Cosby show era, right? You know, well, not everybody on TV is white anymore, right? George and Wheezy Jefferson changed all that shit. So they went from clean-cut American, you know, white Christian values all the way into the kind of, well, liberalish kind of thing, all the way to the, you know, we're black, but like we're still cool era. And, and then you get into the 90s, man, and things changed, and things got complicated, right? And they started reviewing time periods in history, like that 70s show, right? Well, those people, you know, you know they, were, they were just your average American family, you know, it's just the kids were part of the counterculture. They were smoking dope and drinking beers and listening to fucking Molly Hatchet and, you know, doing other things that teenagers do, man. <laughs> you know, they had their life problems, you know, and then you get into the modern age, right, with Netflix and things like that, right? Well, you know, everybody's in a same-sex couple, right? It's all interracial mix, you know? Everybody's making the joyful sounds of fucking, right? You know, that sound when you're stirring a hot bowl of macaroni, you know, when you're doing it with your old lady. You know, or in this case, you know, it's three lesbians and a box of, you know, rubber fist attachments or whatever the fuck people are doing nowadays. You know, or a couple of nasally um, gay fellows, you know, having a, a discussion about who's going to frost whose cake, right? Or who ate the last rice pudding or, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I don't I don't watch TV anymore. Like the worst of it, I have a guilty pleasure, okay? I love action movies and I love shitty nineties movies. Okay. I, I admit it. Okay. I'm sick. I'm fucking wrong. I, I like good TV. And, and good TV doesn't exist anymore. Sorry. My my hands are cramping up. I've had kind of a busy day. But we went from that kind of Hays Code Western era, you know, where John Wayne rode in and saved the day now, to the society we're at. And Hollywood dictated those terms because they get paid by the people running the show, right? If you look at the hippie counterculture movement, they're not a whole lot different than fucking Antifa is now. You look at BLM, they're no different than the Black Panthers. The only difference is the Black Panthers actually tried to do something. You know, BLM's a fucking joke, okay? Now, like, I get it. You know, people are entitled to their opinions and everything else, but... Western society has been on the decline for a long time. You know, the day John Wayne rode off into the sunset for good, you know, is about the time that shit started really becoming more noticeable that things were going on. I mean, there's always been going-ons, but... You know, things took a rapid decline. And, and I think there's no surprise in that. And as always, I'm sure most of you are bored to tears by now. I've been ranting for ten minutes while I smoke a Pall Mall after I finished a movie. But 
you know, just the thought popped in my head, and maybe somebody will enjoy this. Maybe maybe somebody in the future will be like, wow, that's a smart motherfucker. Or, Gee, man, you got it all wrong. Even in the fucking comments, you know. I'm open for the discussion. And as always, if you don't like what I have to say about Clint Eastwood making far better westerns than John Wayne, even though I can respect the Duke, or, uh, you know, why uh, TV sucks nowadays, or, you know, why, why teenagers don't smoke any more dope, drink any beers, uh, smoke any Lucky Strikes, or listen to Molly Hatchet, then eat, eat my fucking shorts. Thank <laughs> you.